Hello, this is Dave from Retired Time Productions, and this is a Magic's Movie Edit Pro tutorial on how to do the vertigo effect or dolly zoom effect using your drone footage. Or maybe you have some other footage you've done using a slider rig or a dolly. In any case, here are some examples from the movie industry where they keep the subject the same size while zooming the background in or out for a marked effect. And I also have done this with my drone using this footage here from the barn and I want to show you how to do it. So the effect can be applied in two ways. You can either apply the effect while the dolly is moving by mechanically zooming the camera in or out or it can be done in post-production as we're going to be doing here. So let's get started and see how to do it with Magic's Movie Edit Pro. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. So here is how we do the vertigo shot or dolly zoom shot with Magic's Movie Edit Pro. So first we need a dolly shot and I've taken this with my DJI Mavic Pro drone. So we import that, just drag it onto the timeline. And now let's pick out a section. So this is when I was just flying up to the barn. I want to get the section where I do a pullback. I'm going to use the pullback technique. You can also do a zoom in, but I'm going to do the pullback. So first thing I need to do is get my barn in the picture right there. I'm going to go ahead and clip right there using the scissors and take out this first section because I'm not going to use that. All right, now let's see how far back we want to pull. Probably just want to go back until we can see the trees, say right there, somewhere in that section. Now it's good to shoot this footage in either 4K or 2.7, 4K is preferable, but I use 2.7K because we're going to be doing some cropping and we still want enough definition after we do the cropping. All right, so I'm going to trim it right there because that's the section I want. Let's trim, and we'll take this section out. Now, this was done in DCINA-like with my Mavic Pro. I was using that color scheme, so I need to do a little color grading first and I've already got a template for that but I'll just show you quickly how I did it. So I just go up here into video effects, brightness contrast, and now we want to adjust the gamma. So just bring the gamma down to a comfortable amount. And I want to see the roof of the barn, some details in the roof of the barn a little bit, so I'm going to bring the contrast down quite a bit so I can see some details in the roof. Maybe put that around 30. The roof was kind of blown out. And now I'm going to bring the gamma down some more. So you see I have the gamma pretty low there. And I can even do an auto exposure just to make it pop a little bit if I want to. So just do a few things to get it to look pretty good however you want it to be. I've also saved a template. Once you're done you can save a template for your filter. Just go into video effects and then save video effects and you can save it there. Just select all and then hit continue and you can save it. See I've already saved one there. So if I wanted to load that template now, I would just go in here, go to Video Effects, and then Load Effects Template. And here I have decent alike with my ND16 filter and my settings that I use with 0, minus 1, minus 1, and 24 frames a second. So I'll just open that, and then it automatically corrects it. But like I said, I wanted to show a little details in the barn roof so I was bringing the contrast down. I know that doesn't make sense but as you bring the contrast down details in the roof come in and then you can bring the gamma down to regain some of the definition in the shot. So I'm just going to leave it right there for now. It's not really critical. Okay now let's get back into doing the vertigo effect. 
So we've trimmed the section, and I want to mention that it's good to have three levels in the video. So see, I have uh, trees in the foreground and some other things in the foreground, then my subject in the middle, and then stuff in the background. The more layers you have, the more the effect pops at you. Uh, it'd be good if there were some trees over here on the left too, but I just didn't have that. So I went with what I had. Okay, so now that we got that, we've got the section trimmed, color graded. Let's go ahead and duplicate the section. So I'm just going to press D on the keyboard, like that. Now I'm going to bring the section down, and you'll see it looks kind of funny there. There. Now you see I've offset it just a little bit. And the reason for that is I want to see the end, the first section of this one overlaid over the last part of the duplicated section so I can compare the sizes of the barn. The important thing is to get the barn the same size at the beginning and the end. Okay, so let's go to the beginning. We'll set the pointer at the beginning and then we'll go to our zoom effect and that's under video animation right here and camera zoom so we go to camera zoom and then we'll go ahead and set a keyframe and we can do that by clicking right here on the keyframe icon and if I drag this down you can see the keyframe right there is set right there okay now let's go to the end and this is where the trick is we'll go to the end try to get both the point over both sections I'm going to advance it with the L key and stop it with the K key. So L and K. And I can back it up with the J key, stop it with the K. Anyway, I want to get close to the end like that. Now, if, if you go up here and hit preview, it takes away the little marquee from the camera zoom and also allows you to do something like this. So you can see both barns right there. And that's the trick. So now let's go back. We're going to go back to edit mode. And we're going to try to just get the barn to be the same size. So I want to grab a little bit of those trees. And if I want to hit this uh, mute, button over here I can take the other video out just so I can see what I'm doing so I'm just working on this bottom video so I want the barn to be about the same size so we'll do a comparison and I'd like to get some of the trees in too let's make this a little larger just about like that just for now and we'll get some of the trees right there in okay now let's turn the mute off and then we'll turn the preview on now we can compare the two sizes I can see this one's a lot larger. So we'll go back to edit. We're going to have to come in just a little bit more. Or maybe I want to go out. It was a lot larger, wasn't it? Let me go out. We'll just go back and forth a little bit. Edit. It still looks larger. Am I doing it right? Tell me. I don't know. Let's look at it again. Ah, uh, yeah, now it's getting down to the right size. A little bit more. There we go. I think they look pretty good. It looks pretty close to me. Okay, now let's just go ahead and bring this back up full screen. And we'll go ahead and run it and see what it looks like. And I'll go ahead and mute this one, just so this one never shows up. All right, let's play it and see what happens. Okay, here we go. And that barn should stay the same size and everything else should zoom. And I think that's what it's doing. It looks pretty good to me. Now if we want to go back and do some more, I'll just unmute that. Go back to here, advance with the L key, stop with the K key, and if we want to pop right to the place we were at before, we can just click on the keyframe right here and highlight it, and that brings the marker right where it should be. 
Now I saw that the barn was kind of off to the left a little bit. Maybe I want to center it up just a little bit like that. Less of the trees. Maybe see some of the mountain right there. Maybe like that. All right, let's try it again. Notice I hit the mute key. All right, let's see what it looks like. Okay, I like that. Keeps the sky in place and keeps the barn in place. So that's it right there. And then once you're done, you can just you can actually just go ahead and delete this one cuz you don't need it anymore. And if you wanted to, you could export this one and save it for a clip to use in other videos. So what we could do is we got the pointer at the beginning, so we'll hit the beginning marker here then put the pointer at the end and I'm gonna back up with the J key just a little bit and hit K and I'll put another marker an end marker there so now I just got this section right here now we can do file export movie and let's make it a magix video format so it's kinda of like a clip a magix clip that we can use later on now I've got this checked export selected range only we gotta have that uh, we can give it a name. Let's just call it Vertigo and uh, Magic Smoothie Edit Pro Vertigo. And then we're going to knock the frames down since we have clipped it a whole lot. Let's make it go ahead and make it a 720p video and we'll standardize the frame rate to 29.97 which is what I use for my camera. I could, I could leave it around 24 if I wanted to okay let's leave it at 24 making an even 24 alright now let's go ahead and export it just click OK and continue continue it's gonna complain about the frame rates being different there's no audio in this so we don't have to worry about audio getting out of sync or anything like that and now it's just exporting and in a minute I'll show you what the clip looks like or maybe a second alright I'm gonna go down to my movie files here and there it is it's the MXV file let me bring this over so you can see it it's the MXV file right here let's bring that back in and I'm gonna see don't adjust I don't want to adjust the movie to it okay now we can play that one and there you go so now I can drop that clip into any other movie I want to I can just save that clip and keep it as a sample. So that's it. That's how you do the vertigo or dolly zoom.